Oh, hi. Um, my name is Christine. I was just doing some phone witnessing. Do you have a minute? I'm sorry. Uh, you reached a brother. <laughs> well, I, I don't really have a brother. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, you're doing phone witnessing? Yeah, you know, just sharing. Doing... A... Yeah, sharing a scripture. Do you have a minute? Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, it's from Romans chapter 4. Um, do you uh -huh. want to do you want to look at it, or do you want me to just read it? You can go ahead and read it. Okay. If in fact Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However. To the one who does not work, but trusts God, who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. So, um, do you have any thought on that? Uh, which scripture was that? Romans what? Yeah, Romans 4, 2 through 5. Okay, what is your name? Christine. Christine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what religion are you? I fellowship with other Christians, but I'm really not, you know, n not into promoting our own, you know, denomination or anything like that. I just like mm -hmm. to focus on the scripture. What do you think about that one? It's interesting. Uh, what, yeah. What do you... What are you getting from it? I mean, what's uh, there's several things we could probably get from yeah. it. But what do you get from it? Well, justification means to be declared righteous. It, it's tied in with the forgiveness of sins and being reconciled to God. And generally, the general Christian view is, is that we're justified by faith when we trust in Christ, that he died for our sins, that he is Lord, and that he rose again. It talks about that in Romans 10, 9 and 10. And we believe that works don't avail to atone for our sins, but that is what Christ did. We, we rely on that alone. And then, you know, that causes change in, in life because at that point, the Holy Spirit comes into your life. It says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. So then, you know, it's just a process of growing in Christ. We don't believe that means you can do anything you want. That would indicate a false faith. So um, it's that's the joy of the gospel, really, to me. You know, it's that's confirmed in Ephesians chapter two, Titus three, says not by works, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of rebirth or regeneration, which means to be made alive spiritually from being spiritually dead. Mm -hmm. So, what's your thought on it? Yeah, well, you know. That's true what you say, that uh, works can't save us alone, mm -hmm. but uh, the Bible also says that works with uh, faith without works is dead, right? Right, right. that's true. So I, men I mentioned dead. that, genuine faith. Yeah. You know, I like how Martin Luther put it. He said that we're saved by faith alone, but the faith that saves is never alone. But see, mm -hmm. the thing is that... Um, if you believe in works or that you have to be saved through some organization, um, you'll never have the really joy of the gospel or assurance, but we call it assurance of salvation because it's not okay. really up to us every day. And it's not, we don't believe um, the millennium is a thousand years of continual probation and tests till you're raised to perfection. That expression isn't really in the Bible. Um, you know, like First John 5 says that we, we can know that we have eternal life. It's, mm -hmm. it's such a blessing. So, you know, in some systems, it really is very works-oriented, and they try to design systems. For example, Mormonism, if you read their plan of salvation, they're always going to connect it to things about their organization, you know, supporting it, going to the temple, you know, talking about it to other people. So that's, in the New Testament, it's basically... Um, Christ is our all in all, and salvation is accomplished by him, and we trust in him. 
So it's just a completely different thing, you know. Mm-hmm. How, how does your Bible read John seventeen three? That's where Jesus, Jesus is praying to his Father. Oh, that knowing, um, let's see, um, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Mm-hmm. So who do you think Jesus was talking about when he said, thee, the only true God? Um, the Father in opposition to false gods. And it's interesting that he puts himself in that equation, doesn't he? This is He is eternal life, knowing him, having a relationship with him. That's what mm-hmm. knowing means there. It doesn't mean taking in knowledge. Right. It's unfortunate that the New World Translation taught that to people for so long. I think they had that translation because they wanted people to think it means studying with Jehovah's Witnesses, taking in knowledge. Oh, now do you want to study? You know? <laughs> It's a it's pretty yeah. slick for people who don't understand the real word there, what it actually means. Mm-hmm. Jesus is well, also called true God in First John chapter five. He's what? Jesus is also called true God in First John chapter five. He's called God by nature in John one one. He is has well, verses about Jehovah are attributed to him in several mm-hmm. lots of places in the New Testament. Not as just an agent, mm-hmm. but it says it's said of the Son. Like in Hebrews 1, he's attributed to creation. And then it quotes from Psalms 102 that says Jehovah did all those. And then it said that is said of the Son. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot to reconcile with that view if you if you believe Jesus is just an angel. Well, he's the Son of God. He's the, mm-hmm. You know, it's obvious that he's the firstborn of all creations in Colossians. So if he was the firstborn... And he was created, right? Firstborn doesn't mean what? first created. There's a different word for first created. Firstborn well, is a transferable that, title in the Old Testament. You know, some were called firstborn. It indicates their rank and superiority. Like David was firstborn, and he's really the lastborn. Mm-hmm. And a couple others as well. well so, Plus, they well, shouldn't be adding... That... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, why did mm-hmm. Jesus say that the Father is greater than he is? Well, if you read the Christian confession called the Athanasian Creed, it says that he is equal according to his div- divinity or deity and inferior according to his humanity. He still actually even has a God. So that's the Christian theology. It's greater. John the Baptist was said to be the greatest, right? Does that mean he's a quasi-divine being? Was it talking about his nature or like his position? And so the Father is considered the unbegotten. Jesus is begotten from all eternity because in John 1, 1, it says in the beginning was the word, which means already was at the beginning of time. So that's why we say he is eternally begotten, not just a son of God or the first son of God, the first Elohim, but, you know, and there, there's, you know, there's many other scriptures that, you know, you would have to deal with as well. <laughs> right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's plenty of evidence that Jesus is the Son of God, the only begotten yeah. Son. The right. Begotten, what, does begot, what does begotten mean? Well, it can mean, like, brought forth. And it is, a, it is difficult, but the way the church fathers, the earliest writings, understood it was to mean that he, a true filiation, they called it, but that he, he had the same nature as the Father. You know, begotten, not just like a created being or similar to the Father, but that he had his very nature, like you're begotten from your parents. You have the same DNA. And it is a difficult word. It's, you know, it's more ancient, and we don't really use that word much. So, you know, it does take some research, but it definitely distinguishes him from angels or other that are called Elohim or gods, right? So I think, you know, in John 1.1, 1, 1, um, you know, if you research it, the New World Translation uses a occult spiritist to validate their John 1.1. 1, 1. His name was Johannes well, Grieber. That's not really a good source. Well, my, my mother's... Uh who's passed away years Mm -hmm. ago, she had a surgeon, Mm -hmm. and I witnessed to him, Mm -hmm. and uh, 
he said, once he realized where I was going, he said, you know, you, you, you people are right about John 1.1. He was a Greek scholar, and he said that we were correct. How could, yeah, um, how could a surgeon <laughs> have also studied it long enough to be a Greek scholar? It's well, um, a, really questionable. That, one, there's some people that can speak uh, 16 languages. How did they mm -hmm. learn that? Mm -hmm. I mean, people have different talents, mm -hmm. and the fact is yeah. he, knew, he knew by researching it that that should have said a God, mm -hmm. not God Almighty, by yeah. any means. It doesn't and if say, you read John 1, 16, it says, no man has seen God, no man. yet they saw Jesus. Yes, yes. And did you know that people saw Jehovah in the Old Testament? Well, it means no that? man has seen God the Father. Abraham saw Jehovah, talked to him in Genesis. And then that same Jehovah came to Sodom and rained down fire from Jehovah, ran down fire rained down fire from heaven from Jehovah. <laughs> so some passages in the Old Testament have actually two Jehovahs. Uh, the messenger of Yahweh is called Jehovah, calls himself Jehovah, you know, or God, is worshipped and forgives sins. Now, Do you the, think the Bible ever contradicts itself? No, no. When it says I, no I man agree. has seen God, they mean God the Father. Generally, in the New Testament, the Father is called God, and Jesus is called Kyrios, Lord, which was actually interesting because the Septuagint used the word Kyrios for Jehovah. So that's a really interesting thing to ponder as well. But many, 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 many more highly qualified Greek scholars would not agree with your surgeon. Uh, so. Well, this, <laughs> I have to disagree with that because I can find many, many writings that you know, agree with what he said. Yeah. For example, there's uh, there's other uh, words in the Greek scriptures or the, the New Testament that uh, where they, the King James and others, they insert the A for the same word, the same Greek phrase. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then in first in John one one they leave it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Rotterdam, the the, uh, the emphatic diaglot. Uh, if you read the intro, introduction to the emphatic diaglot. He brings out that there's over twenty thousand errors in the King James Bible. And the why did you? Why did the Watchtower publish it and distribute it all around the world? Then couldn't they have known that? Oh, we can use any Bible mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. to prove the truth. For example, but for example, First John five seven in the King James Bible mm -hmm. proves the Trinity to be true. It's the only verse in the Bible in the King James Bible that proves the Trinity. Oh but no! The it's Trinity a, it's is a verse. The, Why did somebody add that verse to the Bible? Well, some actually even can make an interesting case that that's not totally proven yet. But the Trinity doesn't rely on just the comma comma Johannium. I mean, because it, the Bible says Jesus is God, the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God. The earliest writings very much emphasize the triune baptism. And um, they taught Jesus was God. Polycarp knew John the Apostle, and he talked about Jesus, God, as he was being martyred. Tertullian, well, you Irenaeus. Early, yeah. You, men you mentioned the earliest writings, and you, you mentioned that that hasn't been proven. It has been proven that 1 John 5, 7 is not found in any Bible manuscript before 1601. Well, I've read, you know, different. I mean, there is still some people who feel differently for different reasons. But, you know, th I'm fine with that. You know, it's it's not really dependent on that at all. So that's, you know. Well, you mentioned earlier about uh, seeing God, you know. Mm -hmm. In the uh, in Exodus, it talks about the burning bush that yes. Jehovah spoke to Moses. Mm -hmm. But then if you read in the New Testament, it mentions that an angel... Right, the the messenger of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Right, it's always right. called the angel so, of the so, Lord. Uh, now, in the New World Translation, uh, they obscure that by calling it just Jehovah's angel. But the Bibles say the angel of the Lord, not just an angel. And he is actually worshipped. He's called Jehovah. He calls himself Jehovah, and yet is distinct from Jehovah 
and forgive sins. Where, where is that? Who, well, who, I, who, you mean the the, the angel messenger calls himself Jehovah. messenger of Yahweh. Well, I don't, I didn't memorize it, but I can share it with you if you want. I can, I just have to find it. Okay. Yeah, it is really interesting. It is considered a Trinitarian proof, the messenger of Yahweh, and in the Old Testament, um, it's not really specifically the word angel. It's Malach, which means messenger. So different ones are called messenger but do you want me to email you that you know if the father and the son are equal why don't they call each other brothers instead of father and son a son well, signifies it, a beginning doesn't it no to the earliest writings to in the bible and in the bible it signifies uh, sharing the same divine nature he's called the eternal it, father or father of eternity in isaiah 9 6 right mm -hmm. that's that's because he's uh responsible for us receiving eternal life no that's just a that's just a unit that's just a unitarian assumption so you have to say it differently he's called mighty god just like jehovah is called mighty god see there well, is there is know, a yeah go ahead what about what about first uh what is it first corinthians 15 where mm -hmm. it says uh Jesus will hand the mm -hmm. kingdom back to his father, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who is his God. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus has a God ever since he took on humanity. He took on flesh. That's See, most Jehovah's Witnesses don't really understand the Orthodox Christian teaching. So if you want to really see what it is, it, it teaches that uh, Philippians 2, that he existed in the form of God and didn't, Actually, every translation is different than yours there, but it says he con did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but, you know, condescended and took on flesh and that he still is a man. It says he is the one mediator, the man, Christ Jesus. And so we believe he is is now has two natures, you know, the divine nature and he took on the human nature in his condescension. And so. That's why you can go around so much with a person. Is Jesus just human or is he God? Both can give many, many scriptures. and But that's totally um, affirming of the, the belief of him having two natures in one person. See? So it's it has more explanatory power than just saying he's just a man or just an angel. Because you all can't explain the verses indicating the deity of Christ and the many scriptures that attribute attributes of Jehovah, titles of Jehovah to him. Well, See, so it kind of explains both. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that, uh, you know, we don't need uh, the creeds of Christendom mm -hmm. to uh, explain the Bible when the mm -hmm. Bible really stands on its own and all mm -hmm. the scriptures agree with you know I was raised Methodist and my mother was Catholic and we both became Jehovah's Witnesses mm -hmm. because we we examined it we studied it you know mm -hmm. you, when I when I before I was a Jehovah's Witness and I went uh, I was getting married and my wife was Catholic and I was really I was raised Methodist but I wasn't practicing anything and the Catholic priest said that uh, wanted to know if I was baptized. It didn't matter what what religion, and uh, just so it was Christendom. Right, right. So I I asked my mother, was I baptized? And she said, well, as a baby, I think, mm -hmm. a Methodist. But mm -hmm. uh, so I called the local Methodist church because she didn't have any proof. So I called the local Methodist church, found this number in the yellow pages, and the preacher. I talked to him, said, uh, I told him the, the story that I needed a certificate. And he said, okay, come on by. So I stopped by after work, mm -hmm. and uh, I went in the church, and he, I told him who I was. He said, oh, yeah, I talked to you on the phone. So he took me over to a water fountain. He sprinkled water on my forehead and gave me a certificate of baptism. He didn't know if I was John the Ripper or who I was. <laughs> it didn't matter. And... Uh, so I got married in the Catholic Church. Um, later on, my mother and I both, at different times, uh, learned the truth. You know, and by comparison, you, you don't become a Jehovah's Witness overnight. You study for usually mm -hmm. at least.
six months. You study their, their program uh -huh. with well, the pre-programmed questions and answers. That